A is for Alcoholic is a program about recovery. My name is John, and I'm an alcoholic. And my name is Jerry, and I'm an alcoholic. Join us as we go through the alphabet of alcoholism one letter at a time. today is I for inspiration. Inspiration. Inspiration is like a a hovering in a lotus position (laughs) above a kiddie pool. Um, Of like my thoughts on it as far as uh, sobriety and inspiration, man, I guess it could go even outside of the creative endeavors, just even inspiration in life. But for me personally, it was hard. It was a hard road, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was a roadblock. It was more of a roadblock because... um, I felt like a lot of my creativity as a painter and a writer and poetry and all that was all rooted in alcoholism and in, in <clears throat> alcohol. Like that was, that was my, uh, edge. let me guess Bukowski fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah huge, you know yes. me, we both, we yes. traded books, man. I, I have a tattoo. Yes, me too. Uh, we both have mm-hmm. tattoos. Yeah. Hunter S Thompson fan, yes. you know, Jack, uh, um, Jack Kerouac, Jack London, all mm-hmm. those guys, you know, uh, who Anthony Burgess, mm-hmm. you know, uh, all those dudes who drank and wrote. And then, of course, the painters, you know, I didn't paint like Jackson Pollock, but I like loved his life. You know, and the guy had to die drunk in a car accident. He was a fall down alcoholic. You know? And uh, I just admired that fire. I thought that alcohol would uh, kindle that fire within me, you know, kindle that inspiration, help me meet that um that uh that flow that i was looking for and i i realized after getting sober that it was all in me the whole time you know (laughs) (laughs) it's well it's true it's really really (laughs) true because i yeah you know i was doing a little bit of research before we were going to record this and i was looking i just typed in my research was googled alcohol and creativity and there was a whole list of very positive um, psychological articles, medical articles saying, well, you know, a couple of drinks really does get the juices flowing and stuff like that. And one of them was like, well, but that's tipsy, not getting drunk. Right. That was one of the disclaimers in there. And I think that, uh, it reminded me of this Tom Robbins quote. I don't remember what book it's from. And I don't even remember the quote exactly. I tried to find it and I have a few books and I couldn't find it. But basically he said that he he said that alcohol and creativity was akin to to like a mother lion and so a lot of times uh-huh. alcohol and create it'll give give birth to ideas but if you continue to drink that that mother that mother lion will like eat the cubs eat the ideas and and just and he did this whole thing wow and it was, yeah i will find out where it's from Damn. i would i i'm gonna have to start great. reading his books again rereading them yeah. but um it was just this great idea and i cut it out or i photocopied it and I had it on my wall for the longest time and it was just that idea not so much I mean it was it was just so poignant because every single time I would sit down to try to write something it was this magical idea that I was just going to get drunk I was going to sit down in front of the typewriter or open a notepad or scribble on a napkin and something magical was going to happen and I'd wake up Mm -hmm. and then Every, every everything would be great. I would have this masterpiece, and most of the time, right. uh, it was that was not the case. Ninety nine yeah. percent of the time, I think there might have been a small window of time back in like two thousand and five where I felt like yeah. I was writing on a regular basis, but I probably wasn't as drinking mm-hmm. as much either. Um, but I, so I mean, I don't know. I I feel like for me the process is very it's still similar right because it's still inside you whatever you have i'm still distracted easily distracted when it's something that i want to focus on i used to Mm -hmm. i used to sit down in front of my laptop and i would put on some music and i would get my cigarettes and i would get my get my alcohol whatever i was drinking that night and i'd be like well it's okay as long as you get a poem out or something if you have a hangover it's no big deal man that's just the price you pay for great art it's totally cool, yeah. right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and so, right. so I would sit down, and sometimes something would come out, but a lot of times, it was just garbage, or I'd get stuck. So I just would say fuck it, and I would drink and smoke, and you know, pass yeah. out. 
And, yeah. you know, my process now. And, and then in recovery, I was like, oh, God, well, if I don't do that one thing, I won't be able to to create anymore. Like, right. I was terrified. I just right. said, well, I guess I'm just done with that part of it. It doesn't exist anymore. And, and I think, of course, too, in early recovery, you're focusing on other things. You're yeah. Not, I mean, yeah. go ahead and write poetry if you want. But, you know, it's 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 not... That's not the focal point of your life at that point. So right, but it, yeah, but yeah, create. I think creating things can be beneficial in early recovery. Is is you know as far as expressing the difficulty that one encounters in early recovery because it is you know you have to learn how to do things all over again without the thing you're used to. Mm -hmm. uh, helping you cope I always felt like I got a, I always get a little woo woo with inspiration and I always felt like inspiration that I was the vehicle and inspiration was driving me it was the driver and then I but for years I always felt like it was a tandem thing between alcohol and inspiration they both were driving me and when I got sober I realized that alcohol was the backseat driver who gave good directions like one time out of a hundred. So, and then every other time he's just like, make a left right now. And you're going down a fucking wrong way street, you know, hubcaps flying off and shit. And so I, I learned that that was just, I, mm -hmm. I hate the analogy of it being a crutch, but it really was a crutch I depended on. And it, I'd look back at my writings and I'd go, Oh shit, man. Everything is about like guns, porn or alcohol. Like that was just it. There was no other subject matter in there. Even with paintings, they are all, these desperate pleas of alcoholism, like everything was in it. Man, how many times would I paint, wake up like a smoking fucking crater of a hangover and come out and have to fix like everything how I many? did the night before? Or just <laughs> dozens, beyond dozens, hundreds. There were times where I'd just literally throw away a canvas. I would just, I was painting these old doors, these slab doors we had in our house. I, we removed them all because we were remodeling a house and I'd hang up, I'd wire the slab door and hang it up on my wall in my garage and paint it, do paintings on them because I was too broke to afford canvases. And there were numerous times where I would get upset because I couldn't make something, I couldn't achieve something I was trying to achieve, and I'd just grab a hammer and just knock holes in the fucking door and then throw it out in the driveway. The neighbors must have thought I was lost my damn mind. And I'd come out shirtless and fat and sweating and <laughs> fuck you to the door, and then, you know, they were just out there, you know, doing their neighborly, watering their lawn or whatever, and I'm losing my biscuits out there. But Over a door. I really feel like... But now I have the same process, but I don't – no, no, I don't break shit. I mean the same process as far as what you described as sitting down with like the cigarettes and the booze. But now I sit down with like a vapor – I vape <laughs> mm -hmm. and then I fucking drink like Diet Pepsis or I'll just drink water or iced tea. But there is always still a drink around. It's just not alcohol yeah. anymore, you know. But that's more because I'm just sitting there and sometimes I have to sit back and look at what I'm doing and kind of survey mm -hmm. it. But so the – the routine is in there, the habits in there, but it's not the uh, bad habit. You know, it's just the the ritual of it now. You know. Yeah. It's still there, and I still think it's salvageable. Actually, I am absolutely positive it's salvageable after quitting drinking. That you can still create things or still work on the same work on the same level you were working before, if not beyond it, because now you have clarity. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely, I guarantee it. You just gotta get back on that pony and ride, yeah. as our old friend took, Coda used to say. You know, <laughs> it took a long time. It took I don't know, probably a year. I certainly the the impetus was there, but I always felt. I think when I first got sober, I felt like a failure. That you know, I had yes. failed somehow. I had failed. I had failed many ways, and mm -hmm. so to think that. I could create something that was worthwhile was very, very hard in the beginning. And yes. it took a long time for me to realize, like you said, that it's, it's, it's still there. It just has to come out in different ways. And you have to kind of, you transmute that thing, whatever it is in, in some other way you, so it's all about creating a different mind space. Well, how else can you do that? Well, you have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Um, you know, for right. me, it's like, well, maybe I can go down to the park and I can sit with a notepad or if I'm going to do like a film thing, just get out of the way and go, go somewhere else. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think one of the things too was a lot of the creative stuff I was doing um, was around recovery. <laughs> like doing this podcast yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm, and there was a right. part of me 
that didn't want that to be all that I was doing. But that that seems to be where I'm at right now. I wanted to create things outside of that as well. And I have and I've started to. But it's a great it's a great inspiration. You're like, wow, I feel alive. Why do I feel alive? This is awesome. So I can actually go and drive my car somewhere. I can go sit at the park and drive my car and not have to worry about whether or not I'm going to be able to have enough to drink if I've had too much to drink. And hell, yeah. it, when you sit there and try and create something in the middle of the night in an ashtray full and empty bottles and you wake up the next day, do you feel like going back at it? Do you feel like sitting back down at, at the laptop or the canvas? You're like, God, I, I right. feel sick. I feel disgusting right. and I feel ashamed of what I've done. And you go back and I would just see some of it is illegible. I don't know why I keep it other than, <laughs> you know, where you're like, it would be like four yeah. lines over the whole, over one page. And I'm like, I don't understand right. any of that. And I, it's so much, so much better now when I, I still have to focus myself. I don't know how you do with discipline and stuff like that. Or do you set aside, like, do you oh, block God. out time or do you just kind of? <laughs> no, I'm incredibly undisciplined. That's my problem. It's weird, man. The process to me is always like I have to warm up to it. I have to I, ha uh, I have, to put my antenna up and see if I catch the signal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's weird. I'll even watch YouTube videos of other people painting and warm up, like get worked up to it. You know, it's almost like watching porn mm -hmm. or something, you know, because I'm like, oh, I want to do that thing they're doing, you know, but I just want to do it in my garage in paint, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah, it's a bad analogy. No, not yeah, at all. Do with it what you will. But um. I have to work myself up to it. I can't, if I schedule a time, then it becomes like work, man. And I'm lazy. I don't like working. Yeah. I mean, I do like working, but I don't, you know, like I don't, but see, that's maybe what I need. I need, I, sometimes I feel like I do need to shake up the way I, I create in my process. Absolutely. Ab absolutely. I totally need I, that. And that might be yeah, it. That's just the way, the only way yeah. that I've found that I need to get into a different state of mind. Cause if that was the yes. trigger, mm -hmm. like this morning getting up and, going for a walk and I really didn't want to. And, you know, I've been on this three day juice cleanse and I don't like to be too far from home. And I had this I, couple <laughs> of different ideas and you know what I mean? And I had a couple uh -huh. different ideas in my head and I just was kind of like mulling them about and I go for this walk and I come back and I've got the first part of this, this thing I wanted to write. And I was like, Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I'll, sometimes I'll stop mm -hmm. like on the road and I'll just plug it into my phone so I can bring the notes back home. And, yeah. um, so it's just re realizing that the realizing that the, the process is still the same in some ways, but the, the, the motivations are different. You know, the, the impetus, yes. the, the catalyst is different. So I have to go and yeah. I have to go out for a walk and I have to sweat and then I have to move and I have to look around and see what the hell is out here. And there's other people and things to avoid and whatever else is going on. And so that my brain can just think, you know, I think that's another mm -hmm. exercise is, is I'm finding more so a mental thing. That's so, that's so much better for me than, than it is physically, but that it gets those mental right. juices flowing. It wakes up my brain and then I can go, Oh, that thing you wanted to do, that thing you've been, you've been staring at for the last five days that you said you were going to have done last week, you know, Oh, okay. There's that thing. And then mm -hmm. another thought was that, and I don't remember where I heard this, but somebody said, don't let the fear of not making something great get in the way of making something good. So, yeah, yeah, you've said I, that to me okay. before, actually. Yeah, it's part of your pep Is talk. To me. I love it, though. Yeah, you've given me a few pep talks, and I've had that one, but I love it. I think um, it's great. So I'll just start writing, and then I'll go back. Yeah, and it's like that's fine. So you got the idea out on paper or on your computer or whatever, and then um, and then you can go back to it, right? I mean, there's nothing's set in stone yet, but. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what your, um, like you said, your process now is to just have, you, you still like to have a beverage in your hand or nearby. Yeah, I, I do. I always have to have a big, big thermos of water or usually what I do is I'll mix Coke zeros and, and club soda. They're called mentirosas, <laughs> you know, and I'll, 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 I'll do that because then I'm like, okay, well I can drink a soda and then finish out this club soda and there's still this mm -hmm positive reinforcement going on you know 
um, while I'm doing it. It's that thing that I used to always do. Th- that being said, I can still go out there and paint, mm-hmm. you know, without without those things. It's just what I prefer. It's part of my process, but or it's not part of my process. Part of the ritual of my process because I'm really I'm really into ritual. Like when I paint, I, there's always something around it. There's always I have to change my clothes and I have to fill the the you know the 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 paint tank the little tanks you know that you mm-hmm. rinse the brushes out the rinse tanks and you know I have to find the right podcast or the right book or whatever it is and it's all that setup you know that that actually is the lazy part for me too because I'm like oh fuck I got to do all this shit just because I want to go be creative you know oh, fuck you know. But it's, that's me sabotaging myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I was going to say, too, is I feel like using alcohol as your base and inspiration uh, always, not, I mean, as far as being an act of alcoholism, is kind of lazy. You know, it's it, that's a lazy habit as well because then you just always fall back on the uh, I'm drunk or I'm not part of society or I'm this or I'm square peg in a round hole kind of thing, you know, and those were the dudes I love to read. And now I go back and I read it and I'm like, this is the same thing over and over again. It's a little fucking lazy. And there's beauty in some of those things, but there's it's to me, I just it, they read like obituaries now, like sad, you know, like lonely, like just. I can't fuck with it anymore. No. I can't fuck with that, whole, you know, with that whole relying on one constant device. It just seems really lazy. It is lazy, yeah. in my opinion, in my humble well, opinion. Well, and I think that there was, um, I was I was doing other research for this a little bit, and there was a um, an author by the name of Raymond Chandler, and I don't know a lot of his stuff. I was looking through it. He did a lot of short stories in the 60s, mm-hmm. so a little bit before my time, but... Um, he said that what was it he and he was he was in an, an alcoholic uh as far as i read he was an alcoholic author as well but he said that a lot of great authors are great authors in spite of being alcoholism you know being alcoholics <laughs> that that was the, that was it was always yeah. fighting against them not for them and um you know kerouac has plenty of quotes about how sad and dark Bukowski has plenty of quotes about how miserable and, you know, I still am not convinced that Bukowski drank as much as he said he did. Cause I don't know how you, how right. you produce that, that volume of work intoxicated. Right. I don't think he but. fucked as many women as he said he did either. Cause that guy, I don't mm-hmm. know, unless things are way different in the sixties and seventies than they are now, Maybe, like being but still it was not. But yeah, do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm I'm skeptical. I know exactly what you mean. And I think the only real deal dude in all those guys was Hunter S. I think Hunter S. really did do like three quarters of that shit. Maybe the wild acting out in public shit. But I, honestly, as far as his consumption of chemicals, I I really feel like he was one of the really only accurate ones. But he died, he died sad in my opinion. Yeah. But what, I guess it would have been sadder if he just would have dwindled away on a hospital bed. So I mean, yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm looking at these people. I don't know their lives. I just know what they've written. So I don't know what in, is going on internally in anybody's head. Mm-hmm. You know, I know what they portrayed to me and what I found very enticing. What became a huge part of my drinking because it was all an excuse. Well, if these guys could do it, I can do it. I can make it. I can make it an affectation. Oh man, I live. I'm not an alcoholic. It's an <laughs> affectation. It's like I have a cane on or a matrix uh, trench coat or something. I drank, you know, I drank by the gallons and tore down fucking, you know, doors. I lived like Bukowski and Hunter S. Thompson. I think you right. were the one that's. Maybe you said it. You came into my apartment one time and you said it looks like Bukowski and Hunter S. Thompson had a fist fight in here, man. What happened? It did. It always <laughs> did, man. But they were listening to like Enya or something. It was always you always threw ba, something ba, weird ba, in there ba. that I was just. Oh no, that's Annie <laughs> that's Lennox. Annie Lennox, dude. Yeah. Um. Just you in the bath, just crying, listening to Annie Lennox. Yeah, it's. And, and yeah, you. <laughs> I, well, there might have been some crying. There probably was some crying. Always. Um. Not just you. Yes, we'll lots together. of lots of Hold crying, um, but I still, as much as I still look back, and I'm, you know, I love a lot of Bukowski's writing still, but I look at it and mm-hmm. I just I'm not as interested as I once was. Yeah. You know, um, I loved Kerouac. Kerouac was the reason why I ended up moving, you know, to Oregon at that at that time because I thought I was going to move to San Francisco, but that didn't work out for various reasons. Yeah. But the guy who I moved to Oregon with, Steve, our friend Steve, he one night 
it's amazingly requoted. Is that is that the right way to put it? Hunter S. Thompson. The quote that Hunter S. Thompson has is he says, "He who makes a beast of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man." And yeah. mm-hmm. Steve said to me one night, and I'm sure that we were we were loaded, and he said, "He who makes a man of himself gets rid of the pain of being a beast." Oh, and you were and like, I was like, "Boom! That's awesome!" I was like, "Why didn't yeah, I think of that?" It's one of those moments. Whoa. And I think in recovery, that's very true, you know, because there's this beast and this demon and this, this hellfire and this, you know, you're, you're confused and you're angry and you're frustrated and you pour whiskey or vodka on top of it. And it's like Mm -hmm. trying to become an adult and become a man, you know, and you go, oh, well, that's how I used to do all that stuff. And I used to hang out late night and party and smoke and drink and we'd write and get the typewriter out. And you know, there, there was some really good stuff out of there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie and tell you that everything was terrible, but we had some good fun at the poetry reads. Yeah. I mean, I, (laughs) I built a whole slam persona out of it. You know, I run into people now who are like a little bit younger than me. They're like in their late thirties and they're like, Hey, it's Jerry fucking Wagner. You Mm -hmm. know, like, I remember you, you, I tattooed uh, a woman that used to run the Poetry Slam, and uh, we talked about me drinking, and she was like, ah, you were shit-faced every single time, and I was like, yeah, I built a whole character out of it, but that wasn't really me. Like, once I left, I wasn't, you know, I was at home Mm -hmm. feeling sad as fuck about whatever, you know, like whatever the alcohol decided to take that turn on and make the robble happen. You, um, I called you one night, and you were sober, and... I was going to go do a poetry read, which I hadn't done for a very long time. And you were like, just John, just don't drink too much. I know you're going to go in there and drink, but don't drink too much. Was I still maybe, drinking or was maybe I you were still drinking? I don't sobriety. know. This yeah. was, this is a while back, but, mm-hmm. and I just remember being so nervous and it was just this little pub and it was no big deal. You know, it shouldn't have been, right. but I was so nervous. And I just remember like, yeah, I got to get enough liquor in me so that I can do this. And the fear will go away. Right. right? Yeah. And the fear never goes away with alcohol. And I could totally go do it now. Scared. I mean, I haven't, I would love to, I should find out where to go do this. Maybe go back to that place. Mm-hmm. I just, I feel like it would be so much easier not only to, to get up on stage and read in front of people because I've already, you know, we do that in the, uh, in the 12 step program, we get up and talk to a bunch of strangers all the time anyway. Right, share so. anyway, right? Yeah. All you got to do is just use your outside voice <laughs> inside. I think that you're genuine when you're not drinking, mm-hmm. you're not putting forth a facade. You're not putting forth like a fake persona. You're just being who you truly are. And honestly, the, I don't know, should just be for you anyway at this point. Mm-hmm. But I guess if you're slamming and competing, it's for them. You put on right. a show, bring out a top hat or whatever, and to, you know, <laughs> I don't know what's cool. Steampunk? Steampunk? I dress up like you're really into steampunk and do some poems. You know? I think the kids like that, right? Dubstep? If you're ready, let's do it. I think... Well, do some dubstep steampunk. One step steampunk? No, dubstep dub step step steampunk. Steampunk. You heard it here first. I don't know what that is. You people get it or get it ready. Is that like the... You, you folks get it ready for <laughs> us. I'll tend to you. Yeah. I just... I, I feel so much more at ease with stuff. And like you said, it should really be for you. I'm not so hard on myself like I used to be either. Mm-hmm. I don't know how... I mean, obviously, you're not smashing paintings anymore. You might just decide no, to reuse... I just the, give up on them. <laughs> you might just, I just wi- reuse the, the canvas. I just hang them up on the garage wall and walk away for a year. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in the garage yeah. and wait... It's gone. I'm like out of mind. Mm-hmm. I'll just flip it around. Yeah. You know, and I was always yeah. so concerned about being what I thought I should be and writing these sort yeah. of, yeah. you know, it, like you said, it had to be, it had to be intense and it had to be sometimes violent and it had to be, it had to be this lamentation of my, you know, sordid life or something. You know your what howl. I mean? Had to be your howl. Every poem had to be Ginsburg's yeah. howl. You know, just... And it's like now just write what you feel and if it comes off a little more a little more mary oliver and a little less bukowski then that's fine too man <laughs> I, I i forgot about you and mary oliver you're trying so hard to get me into her and i think i was still drinking at that point i was like i'm not reading this forest of poem shit you know like i want to hear poems about alleyway tom waits mm-hmm. and shit you know? yeah even hey he's yeah. sober too yeah yeah so i just it seems to be also that there's It seems to be a cycle with artists or it seems, I mean, there's very few successful, happy, healthy artists that continue to 
use drugs and alcohol to facilitate. Right. Well, I mean, what the Rolling Stones, it's Keith Richards, s- a fucking, or is that just it's a fucking? F- yeah, no, I don't. I think Keith Richards is probably straight. Is now, that is I that imagine. is that just know. a put on? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I just know that it's such a fast burning fuel, and it doesn't last long. But it burns intensely. But it fucking damages all the machinery, and it just doesn't last long. And you just keep jamming all this fast burning fuel into the machinery of your mind, and eventually it burns out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you're just always running on a red line. I remember listening to a Joe Rogan podcast, and he was talking about drinking like that. And he's like, I just can't imagine running my body on that red line constantly. And it like always stuck with me that I was sitting here running my body on a red line, trying to pursue something that I couldn't attain. I was just running as fast as I could trying to get this get this thing out of me. And I realized after I got sober, if I just took my time and walked with finesse instead of ran with my head straight down, you know, staring at the ground, I was going to get to it eventually. And if I didn't, I didn't. At least the journey was kind of fun, I guess. Yeah. Mostly. There was yeah. there were there was lots of <laughs> wonderful, great moments. And it was a lot of fun in <sighs> at being, you know, 21 and 22. It just I feel like there was always for me this sort of sense of unease and frustration and sadness and this it was a put on it was you know trying to be something that i wasn't and i did that for so long and now it's like what a relief i can just be who i am if i want to write a poem about the garden you know then (laughs) then i'm gonna write a poem about the garden it's not like we're all gonna laugh at you and be like way to write a poem about the garden you pussy you know what i mean like (laughs) And the people who say that, you're like, why don't you check yourself that you so, you got so much judgment hey man, about a poem about I'm gonna a garden. block you on Instagram, bro. That's yeah, I'm gonna block you on Instagram. <laughs> exactly. So it's just you know, and and having I still I love I love fun wordplay that you know doesn't mean anything, and I love writing about all kinds of stuff, and I get really excited to do different little film projects that I've worked on, and you yeah. know the amount you know what I've realized too is that anything that any creative project that requires any sort of um, um, prep work, I never would have done before. No. We barely, we made those films back in the uh, early aughts, in the early 2000s. And we barely right. made it through with a camcorder and a VCR and a bottle of, yeah. what was that? Like eight star beams, eight, beams star. eight star whiskey in a plastic jug. And, <laughs> and brokers. But it was those things, though, that they never had plans Mm -mm. nothing ever was we never figured it we just filmed things and edited them badly and then made everybody watch them over and over again yes and everybody was so every time i'd have a new girlfriend i'd be like you want to watch these videos i made you know i need need, they were not they were not great i mean some you know what the the only good one was the fudge cake royale with coda and maddie hayward working out true and cut off jean shorts that was uh, that one was so damn fun i still i still have them i'll have to i'll have to resurrect them i think after a little bit of time they might have some i think so i want to see like 25 year old jerry i'm real curious about what his deal is you know (laughs) uh whiskey and mcdonald's i don't know yeah fedora and a hoodie you know what i'm saying like a a skate hoodie and a cool fedora it's like what are you doing dog i've but uh yeah it's i I just i just love that that now i have the wherewithal in the I'm able to the wherewithal if that's the right word, but I don't. I'm not afraid of the prep work that it takes to film something. You know, they're like doing out, it, taking shots and doing storyboarding and all that little yeah. things. All those little things that are required to make a good product. Like I'm actually, I want to make a good product. I don't want to just have. You know, it's never. It, lightning's not just going to strike every single time. I feel like I want to be no. validated for something creative that I've done. <laughs> Yeah. I have to work for that validation. And honestly, the only validation that really is any good is your own. I mean, it's nice right. when somebody says, wow, great job. And somebody's excited about something you made and they watch it and they tell you and, and all that. But I mean, I, I, for me, it's about being happy with stuff that I've done. You know? Yes. Yeah. There's a, a satisfaction in making pure art. Or just any creative endeavor, making it purely, mm-hmm. you know, sincerely and genuine. I, I think that's a common theme in these podcasts: is sincerity and genuine. I think we both struggled with that <laughs> for years during our sure. Drinking, we struggled. There's just a satisfaction in mm-hmm. it. There's just, and it can be attainable. I mean, if someone's sitting right now, wherever they're doing whatever they're doing, listening to this podcast, and they're thinking, "I can't ever do it again," like it's, I absolutely, I, I assure you, it can be done again. 
Absolutely, a hundred percent, and without better. that, without that backseat driver, yeah, and right? better. Yeah, you don't need somebody yelling at you every single time, getting in your way, just trying to destroy what you're trying to create. And that's that's right. that's what it was for me. And it, yeah, so I'm much happier and much 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 more satisfied with anything that I do, even the stuff that I'm not satisfied with, and I go, eh. Well, well, if, do you really want to fix that? Do you really want to make that better? Like, we'll go think on it. And so, you know, yeah. go have a cup of coffee yeah, and a walk and figure it out. So, and before I would just throw it away, like you said, just yeah. <laughs> smash it, destroy it, whatever. But With a hammer. Well, well, my wife is sitting there doing <laughs> photo edits in the same garage. I just stroll out, stroll back in with a hammer and start smashing shit. And she's like, what the fuck are you doing? <sighs> like, it's part of my process. Yeah, the process doesn't it's it it doesn't have to be that way. And that's that's not no, passion. That's 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 madness. Which is not to say you shouldn't be a little bit crazy when you create things, but um it's a much You don't need to be all the way no. crazy though, because then yeah, <laughs> then you don't really get shit done except for being all the way crazy. But I like I like my process as it is now. Even though it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. always seem as productive as I would like it. I'm really much happier with the process as it is now, and it is definitely attainable to anybody out there who thinks that they have to have substance to create something. Yeah, you're you're actually finishing things now, which is great. Right? You know? <laughs> that yes. didn't used to be the case. I was a good starter. I was not a very good great finisher. Great starter, not a great finisher. Same here. But um, but we're both getting. Getting stuff done. Um, Jerry does all kinds of awesome art. You can see, you got check him out on Instagram. Um, yeah. Me too. Do film stuff. I'm uh, Sonic John zero 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 and uh, Jerry. I'm uh, J- Jerry Wagner Jr. on Instagram. There you go. The Junior Junior Mints. No, not Junior Mints. <laughs> Jerry Wagner Junior. But I love Junior Mints though. I love Junior Mints so much. Oh man, I can't wait to have yeah. something to eat after this cleanse. Um, well, yeah. thanks, man. Junior thanks Mints. for chatting, and um, I appreciate it and appreciate you. And I'm glad that we could create something awesome and cool. And I don't mean to sound corny because I really mean it. <laughs> that no, I'm taking the rays of positivity. I'm taking them through Facetime right now. I love so it. So this is Thank this you. is a great thing. Thank you very much. And yeah. Um, yeah. we'll do it again next week. Thanks again for listening. As always, our music is by Neglect. You can find his stuff at neglectsound.bandcamp.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can listen to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And get a hold of us at A is for alcoholic at gmail.com.